ones, my name is Heather. Today we are looking at the military influence on fashion. So this follows on from last week's video, which was the Western influence on fashion. So I will have that linked somewhere. I really find it fascinating how clothes can originate in a realm because they have a function in that realm, then get adopted and adapted seamlessly integrated and then diffused into everyday fashion. I was really surprised at how many items that we wear every day originated from the military. Now the military have both their combat functions as well as their ceremonial functions. So there's quite a range of items to select from. When I say military, I'm talking about all of the armed forces. So that is the land army, the air force, the navy, so land, sea and air, as well as special operations, marines. I'm sure I've missed out a few, but I hope you get the idea. So I have nine items to show you and I've put them together into two outfits. And once again, I hope that you enjoy watching this as much as I have enjoyed putting it together and how much I am sure I will enjoy filming it. First introduced in 1858 as the uniform for the French Navy, it had 21 distinctive stripes representing each of Napoleon's victories. The navy horizontal stripes against the white background made it easy to locate any sailors who may have fallen overboard and floating in the sea. Then Coco Chanel incorporated the look into her 1917 nautical collection. By doing so, she revolutionised women's fashion in her inimitable way. It works because it works. I've figured out that the top is a way of having a chic look with the dark colour, but because it's broken up with the white, it actually is more appealing to the eye. I feel fresh and relaxed in it. It is my go-to unfussy off-duty look. Nothing else needs to be said or worn with it on the top. It stands alone. It gives a nod to the classic, says so much with so little. It has been a fashion staple in my wardrobe for over 20 years now, is always available in one form or another and fits my aesthetic. It has been around for ages, simple but effective and worn on the weekends. In other words, classic, elegant and fun. The bell-bottom leg was a distinctive feature of the navy uniform. The hem could be rolled up when the sailors were cleaning the deck. It was wide enough to prevent the leg from getting wet. They could be easily removed in the sea as they didn't cling to the skin and had enough fabric to grab onto. Buttons were used at the waist as zips were not yet widely produced as the metal would easily corrode in the salty sea water. It was a feature to help the sailors put them on and off easily in a hurry. They have gone through many variations over the years. The enduring features of the wide leg have been found to be flattering to the female form. I find myself gravitating towards this style of pant because it is flattering, adds a touch of panache to any casual outfit, continues the vertical line and creates the optical illusion of being taller and slimmer. Accredited to Mackintosh and Hancock in the 1820s, developed by John Emery in 1853 and taken a step further in 1856 by Thomas Burberry. It is now an established fashion essential in most wardrobes. During World War I, officers purchased Burberry's trench coat to wear over their uniforms. After World War II, it filtered into mainstream fashion through the movies. From the 1940s onwards, it was seen being worn by a range of civilians in a variety of ways in movies. It made its way into mainstream clothing with many of its remnant utilitarian features. It's a classic. It is easily recognisable as all-purpose outerwear. By some magic, it works with everything. The details of the epaulettes, the back shoulder flap, double breast, lightweight yet waterproof fabric. 
It can be interpreted in so many ways and is universally flattering. It can be worn by both genders. I love how it has connections to my style icons and has proven itself to stand the test of time. The modern day t-shirt has its origins as an undergarment that the soldiers would wear. They started to wear it on its own when they were in the barracks and in hot weather. It was not considered suitable to be worn in public until Marlon Brando wore it in a streetcar named Desire in 1951. It is sheer simplicity. As I am smaller on top, I like the clean lines of a simple white t-shirt. This is made of high quality stretch cotton and is just the right fit. The simple top keeps the focus on other parts of the outfit and makes it easy to build. White space is used a lot in art and interior decor to present features. The same principle applies in clothing. Soldiers would tie material around their necks during combat to protect the vulnerable area from enemy attack. Cravats and scarves were also worn around the necks of members of the armed forces during parades as part of their identity in a battalion. So the adaptation to neckties being a fashion accessory was a logical one. It is a simple and quick way to add some interest to a simple white t-shirt. The colours in the scarf can bring out colours in other parts of the outfit. Tying a small scarf around your neck gives a touch of panache that is eye-catching and chic. I like drawing the eye to my neck. It creates a simple clean line from waist to neck and simplifies the look. It makes it unfussy and makes you the focus rather than the clothes. The use of the colour khaki for the uniforms worn by land soldiers in the Boer War between 1899 and 1902 was preferred as it didn't fade. These days, khaki is adopted for fashion because it is so close to neutral. It has a green undertone and can also span to a beige. It is a great colour on most complexions within its range. Items made from khaki can be worn casually. I find these style of pants or trousers so comfortable to wear. The elasticated waist gives a relaxed style and makes them so easy to put on and off. The elastic around the ankles creates a bit of cuff at the ankle so it defines the smallest part of the lower leg. The unique combinations of the cotton fabric with the neutrality of khaki and the no fuss pant style all adds up to a casual look. I have two pairs, each distinct from each other. This one is the most obvious. Soldiers would wear these boots when marching and in direct combat. The tread marks would help with gripping the ground. The heavy sole provides support to their feet. The high upper with lace-ups provide ankle stability and protection from the surroundings. I like the option that the masculinity of combat style boots gives me in contrast dressing. Wearing these chunky boots is a direct contrast to my more feminine energy. Wearing these boots with cargo pants and a simple white t-shirt all add up to a masculine vibe. Then, added with a necktie, the outfit is transformed into a feminine look. I know these are a modified version of the true combat boot, but that is what I like about them. Worn by pilots to keep them warm in the cockpit at high altitudes. It would be fur-lined around the neck to insulate against the cold. The hip length would make it easier to sit in the narrow cockpit and provide the manoeuvrability on the lower half. It gravitated into mainstream fashion via a detour of being accepted by gangs and subcultures. I am not a jacket person. I appreciate them on others, but it is not a style that suits me. I feel boring when I wear a jacket and it covers my waist, which I am always looking to emphasise. I like the bomber jacket because it adds the edge to an otherwise classic line. I like how the bomber jacket comes to the hip so it creates a bit of interest and shape. General Douglas MacArthur wore them during World War II, the first time that photographers were on site to record the military in the field. 
Of course, Tom Cruise immortalized the look in Top Gun. This particular style of sunglasses is more masculine and does appeal to the fans of that genre. However, the whole mysterious and cool allure of a pair of dark shades is iconic. This style of glasses doesn't appeal to me. I am not into the aviator style, but the concept of large oversized sunglasses resonates with everyone. Choose the style that works for you. These are my most recent addition and they are fun. I can kid myself that I am a top gun when I add this final accessory to my military inspired outfit. So, sorry, that was actually three outfits that I had to show you. It's amazing that these are items that we have in our everyday wardrobe. I did not go out and get anything especially for this video. I literally shopped my closet. These are everyday items that I have in my wardrobe and I just put them together to make these three military inspired outfits for you really is quite fascinating. So continuing on with our style influences series, next week I am going to look at the French influence on style. Very ambitious I know, but there is a lot of talk about the French influence on style and I just want to delve into it. So I really look forward to seeing you then and I do hope you will join me.